Let's say I forget the Taylor expansion of EX, but I do remember that EX is the only function whose derivative and integration are both itself. Let's start with the integration form. As someone who is really good at calculus, I don't care about the lower bound, upper bound. In fact, I don't care about the dx. So let's remove it. Much better. Now I can move everything to the left hand side. So I have 1 minus integration sign, whatever that means right now, times ex is 0. And I'm also free to left multiply the inverse of 1 minus integration sign. This looks familiar, doesn't it? As someone with a physics background, I can't resist expanding anything that is expandable. This looks very promising. Let's start the calculation term by term. The first term is zero. But isn't the second term also zero? No, because we don't have dx. It is not the normal integral that takes zero as integrand. It is the operation integral that applies on zero. So what's the result? It's easier to think from the opposite side. Its derivative is zero. Therefore, it's a constant. As someone with a physics background, that constant must be one. And similarly, I'm looking for the value whose derivative is one. It's x. The whose derivative is that. It's x squared over two factorial. Then this chain of logic continues, which recovers the Taylor expansion of ex. Yummy. At the end of the video, I want to make some clarifications. With proper definitions, everything I have done so far is legitimate. If you did this in your calculus one class, just say the physics professor said it's okay.